I often talk about tissue culture in my videos and get asked about it quite a bit. Many of the plants in my nursery have started their life as a little tissue culture. And although you may not be aware, I'd hazard a guess quite a few of your plants have started off as tissue culture as well. In fact, most of the plants on offer in garden centers or nurseries have been grown this way. But there is a bit of stigma around tissue culture plants as it's not a natural way of reproduction. I've even heard people say on more than one occasion that tissue culture plants are inferior. And so in this video, I'll explain what tissue culture is and talk about my experience with it. Plant tissue culture is a science that explores growth and development of plants at cellular level. Plant tissue culture can be dated back to 1902 Germany where Gottlieb Haberland proposed the theoretical basis of it. Throughout 20th century, advancements in tissue culture grew rapidly. These days, it's an important part of agriculture and horticulture as it allows for rapid multiplication of plants. Tissue culture plants are grown from tissues, organs or cells of a plant. These, for instance, can be parts of leaf, stem, root, inflorescence or seed. The tissues are then placed in a sterile environment and provided all the necessary nutrients for growth. The growing conditions are controlled and the tissues are given ideal light, temperature and humidity. All of this happens in a lab under sterile conditions. Without tissue culture, many of the plant varieties today would not exist and if they did, they wouldn't be widely available. Just one plant can be turned into hundreds of individual plants in a fairly short amount of time. To get the same amount of plants by conventional propagation, it would take many years to achieve the same result. But it's not just rapid multiplication, quality is also a factor. Although some mutations always happen, plants raised as tissue culture are mostly exactly the same as the mother plant. A good quality explant will almost always guarantee good quality tissue culture plants. Because of the sterile conditions, they are also disease and bacteria free. But it's not all about horticulture and agriculture. This science is also important when it comes to conservation and endangered plants. Yes, you can. However, there's a major but. While all the bits and pieces such as the growing media, hormones, vessels and even sterile tents can easily be bought, doing tissue culture at home is far from simple. Keeping things sterile is a major issue. You cannot breathe on or touch any of the equipment or plants. Any tiny bacteria contamination will ruin everything. Another major problem is the source. You will need to prepare the growing media and will have to be exact with the measurements. The issue is that different plants may require different recipes and the generic ones will not work. These days you can buy kits and pre-made media but transporting them on a hot day for instance can ruin some of the components. Buying all of the stuff can be pricey too. There are at least a dozen other problems I could name with home tissue culture but still it is doable. If you want to experiment, I'd suggest reading a good amount of online material and maybe start with a kit. I have tried and it is difficult and time consuming. All of the tissue cultures in my nursery are bought in from labs. I know I'm likely to get a good product from quality plants and it is quite cheap. I buy indoor foliage plant and succulent tissue cultures. Depending on the variety, the cost is usually between 80 cents to 2 Australian dollars. Some rare varieties such as Monstera Thai Constellation can fetch over 50 dollars per one tiny tissue culture plant. They do usually come down in price after a couple of years once they're not so rare. This is what tissue culture plants look like on arrival. They're tiny and very fragile. I only order them in spring when the weather is quite mild as they can die easily when it's too hot or cold. They've been raised in rooms where temperature, humidity and light is controlled. 
Because of this, they'll need loads of TLC until they settle in, acclimatize and start growing. These here are Graptoviria pink ruby after 3 months in the greenhouse, now ready to go outdoors. Notice how amazingly uniform the plants are. That is the beauty of tissue culture. When I get a delivery of tissue cultures, they are immediately planted in trays. Some nurseries use koi or peat plugs, but I use succulent pudding mix and it works well for me. They then go in a covered greenhouse where I can control watering and after they've grown a few roots, I place them under 30% shade cloth outdoors. Depending on the variety, it can take anywhere between 5 to 12 months before they are ready to sell. In my experience, tissue culture plants are not in any way worse, less hardy or inferior to seed grown or conventionally propagated plants. Personally, I love tissue culture plants and will continue growing them. In my opinion, some of the negative experience may come from growing a variety that's not very hardy or buying greenhouse grown plants. Many of the hybrids these days are grown purely for looks and discount how hardy the plant is. The demand for new cultivars is huge and it fuels creating plants that are beautiful to look at but difficult to grow. I love to use Echoviria Romeo as an example. It is said to be an accidental mutation that happened in a nursery. Thanks to the amazing color, it was then mass produced. But it's such a pain in the neck to grow. Despite this, Romeo has been used as a parent to create new hybrids multiple times. Plants like these are susceptible to disease and can die easily. And because they have been mass produced via tissue culture, some associate the poor breeding with how they were grown. I don't think any of this is a tissue culture problem though. If you grow hardy plants via tissue culture, they will end up being hardy. So yeah, based on my years long experience, I'm a big fan of tissue culture and think it's absolutely great. But this is just my view. I'd also really like to hear your thoughts, so drop us a comment if you have an opinion on tissue culture. And that is that for today. I hope this video was educational and if you'd like to learn more about succulents, hit the subscribe button or go to succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you so very much for watching.